When darkness is your ally, you're always one step ahead. Like a pack of wolves on the hunt. U.S. troops use the shadows of the night for a tactical edge on the battlefield. Hello again everyone, it's Matamus here and thank you for joining me. We're going back into the world of military technology and how they have advanced. And today's topic is night vision. Of course, no military would be complete without some sort of night vision capability to allow it to perform within a night environment. You know, it's interesting to learn a little bit about the history of night vision um, because it's hard to imagine a military without night vision technology. You know, goggles and scopes that really make some of the most blackest landscapes jump to life and it's imperative that military forces are able to operate at night because at the end of the day, nighttime is when the enemy is at its most weakest, most vulnerable, uh, and it's just a lot more approachable to be able to do missions at night. Uh, the history of night vision devices goes back to just before World War II, if you weren't aware, when Germany developed primitive infrared devices and the Allies actually followed suit. They were known as Generation Zero technologies and they amplified existing light to about 1,000 times, but were extremely bulky and cumbersome. They basically had infrared searchlights, so big that they need to be mounted on flatbed trucks, making them easy targets for the enemy. But of course, everything must start somewhere, and as we go through history and through time and through various different conflicts, which is sad to say, um, you know, it has progressed immensely, and today, I can't even explain to you the kind of technologies that we're using. Um, the first generation kind of, um, you know, uh, powerful night vision goggles were based in the 1960s. Uh, scientists have created uh, the first generation of passive night vision devices which didn't really need an infrared illuminator to function. Uh, devices like the small starlight scope were crucial actually in the Vietnam War with some soldiers often fighting in extremely low light jungle conditions which of course as you know is uh, very very risky when coming across guerrilla warfare insurgents. In the 1970s, uh, there was a lot of breakthroughs in thermal imaging, which was improved through next several decades from that point. Night vision systems were a major part, of course, for Operation Desert Storm in the early 1990s, with one general actually testifying that the Army's night vision capability was the biggest advantage he had over the enemy. Of course, when you're coming up against an enemy who has no real capability of night vision, you have a huge advantage, and it's very interesting to see uh, the kind of technologies that are coming out now that have gone way beyond just seeing things in the dark. We're looking at, you know, goggles that can track targets, can display information, uh, are very, very capable of being uh, upgraded to allow for even more capabilities, um, which I'm sure developments from the United States and many other countries around the world are working on today. There are two ways that night vision can work, however. First, there is image intensification. It takes existing ambient light, like moonlight or starlight, and amplifying it through an electrical and chemical process. This produces the classic bright green image we're all familiar from TVs and movies. Then there's thermal imaging, which captures the infrared energy emitted by people and objects, which is really the way we're starting to go in the modern day world now. This has the advantage of working in complete, utter darkness, when there's not even a touch of starlight to intensify, such as in a cave or, you know, in a trench or whatever it may be. Today, night vision devices can amplify light 50,000 times or more compared to the Second World War of 1,000 times and scientists continue to innovate to this day. One thing I will admit and I have a huge respect for is for those who have served in the armed forces back in the day, we're talking about you know 60s, 70s, 80s, where the technology was still coming up to par. When I had my night vision goggles or night vision monocle should I say in Afghanistan, um, I didn't have much use for it, it wasn't very helpful. This was mainly for the fact that for the most part of my tour I was vehicle bound which means I was mounted on my warrior uh, and we were obviously tracking a lot of dust in front of us and behind us and when using a monocle or any kind of night vision goggle um, that's an older generation you don't see much through that dust and it's very difficult to see much and it really destroys your depth perception and when you're driving vehicles over you know wadis and, and valleys and such that's not a good thing so it was really useless for me but I can't even imagine though 
those who used the even older technologies um, how difficult it must have been to actually operate at night using even some of the more primitive night vision goggles. But big respect and shout out to you. I mean, at the end of the day, we all started somewhere. I'm sure in the time of which you did serve with night vision goggles, you were like super impressed or amazed by the technology that was around right now. Uh, but of course, with rapid growth in thermal imaging and infrared technology, optics manufacturers today continue to advance their products in an effort to keep up with a very high demanding market, including night vision devices, which honestly, it spans a huge sector, both civilian and military. And of course, in military aspects, we're talking about people's lives are at risk here. You know, people are utilizing these scopes to potentially engage enemy targets, monitor objectives, whatever it may be, this is life-saving kit. It's not just a convenience, this thing is something that will literally protect your life. And, you know, with that being said, the market is huge for this, there's a lot of competitors, and it's very, very, um, you know, interesting to me to see some of the competitors and kind of technology they're actually bringing out and the way that they're combining different variants of that technology to make this i guess super night vision goggle which is in really impressive i mean wearable night vision devices such as enhanced night vision goggles or envg which uses thermal imaging in their design continuously improve this performance as the technology evolves very very quickly different materials different kinds of battery packages and all this sort of stuff now night vision goggles as we all pretty much know them or mvgs as you know a lot of people like to call are designed pretty much to be suitable for complete portable application which basically means they're typically designed in two styles binocular or monocular two eyepieces or one eyepiece and some night vision goggles now even have multiple eyepieces to allow you to have a bigger field of view this is huge guys field of view is one of the biggest things i hated about my monocular um, because it really did kind of throw you off it actually gave me headaches sometimes trying to use that thing um, the binocular design for night vision goggles provides a very wide field of vision 40 to 60 degrees field of view normally in low light um, beneficial for most military personnel including pilots and infantry with increased depth of field of course binoculars are a lot more advantageous when going into a night vision environment because it gives you a complete night vision picture instead of just standalone one eye. Depending on the kind of uh, firearm that you're using or optics you're using, it can be quite easy or quite difficult to interchange between optics and night vision. It's one of the key things that you know most military and defense contractors are trying to improve on for engaging targets in night vision environments to be able to utilize both optics from the rifle or the weapon system they're using and the uh, the you know optics that they're using for their night vision uh, parameters and that to me was something that i always struggled with trying to use my you know um monocular night vision was very very difficult using my rifle because it just didn't work well with the susat and it was just a pain in the butt and for the most part i just you know used the bgti on the warrior which well, I mean, if I'm going to use a chain gun, I might as well use the chain gun than I do on my small arm. Um, but technology is just going crazy. I mean, night vision goggles are forecasted to remain in the biggest market for defense for more than three years. It is huge. Uh, it's expected to show the highest revenue growth through 2020, exceeding $9 billion. We're talking about extremely high-end optics here. I don't think people quite realize that night vision goggles aren't cheap. Similar to, you know, optics on high-powered rifles. They're expensive things, guys. Some of those scopes cost up to $5,000. Um, projected market value of night vision goggles is expected to see a huge growth rate of about 11.1%. So this technology that's coming out, this new kind of features that they're bringing out, is opening the floodgates to the military world of night vision capabilities. And it's really impressive to see. And I can only imagine the kind of things that are going to come out in the near future. Just to touch base on exactly what is out there and what kind of things are capable of doing for night vision goggles right now, there are some seriously impressive new features coming out for optics on the ever everyday soldier. For instance, of course we have standard thermal imaging uh, and very unique and adaptable forms of night vision. However, there is new technology now coming in place that actually allows the user of the optics to use a camera-based system that allows them to actually use their rifle looking around corners, uh, recording footage for reconnaissance, whatever it may be, uh, and actually tracking targets. The, the technology is just advancing so, so quickly that it can recognize, you know, friend or foe, uh, look through smoke screens, and the most important piece of uh, technology that's really coming out in this kind of sector is the fact that you can actually now use these firearm uh, mounted cameras that integrate with the reticle that's on your helmet or through the night vision site you're using. This is a game changer and a lot of people get very triggered when you talk about guns pointing around corners but it is a huge feature and something that I think in the next 10 to 20 years is going to expand very very quickly. 
with night vision it's very you know uh, self-explanatory if you have something that you're gonna have to look through anyway why not at least have the ability to scout around a sector or look around a corner without having to risk putting yourself in danger and this kind of technology is being integrated and cross referenced I guess with night vision because it makes complete sense if they're gonna put a lot of focus on the optics itself for night vision why not try and focus on some of the other capabilities that these kind of optics can have and the soldiers I'm sure on the ground in the next 10 to 20 years are all gonna be utilizing this kind of technology and if not well I'll eat my own hat because I can almost guarantee that it's going to happen so as you can see technology is adapting to some really interesting features for these kind of systems now considering that military and defense applications and requirements are the biggest contributor in the increasing demand for night vision technology, optical engineers are constantly looking for these little designs like we just saw and materials that can really perform at a very high level but also of course reduce weight. No one likes carrying these things on their heads and trust me when you wear a monocle type or monocular type night vision goggle for long enough it's not a great time. The tactical advantage is the true key to the drive of all this though especially when it comes to enhanced night vision goggles like we're seeing right now. This technology fuses thermal imaging and image intensifiers inside one device leading to rapid acquisition of targets by using the weapon and enhanced night vision goggles as one of the Bluetooth kind of technologies. One of the best advantages of ENVG is that it's a fused system of multiple technologies that gives the user greater situational awareness. For instance, it can actually highlight the outline of a soldier in comparison to the backdrop of anything else, inclusive of that as vehicles. That's pretty damn clever technology, guys. Normally stuff that you would normally see on a vehicle um, because they have the kind of sensors and the kind of battery power and you know technology that's been invested into that particular vehicle. Now, the everyday infantryman or soldier is getting this type of technology and it's very very clever. IR Glass offers excellent parts part uniformity um, and the manufacturing costs are actually reducing so these things can be you know interchangeable to other devices and other kinds of goggles which in turn obviously will reduce its overall costs and when it comes to night vision goggles money is a big key player in this. I won't lie to you, I would really love to own my own pair of night vision goggles even though I would have no real requirement for them and I'm very intrigued as to how the Canadian Armed Forces night vision goggles or night vision systems work compared to my British counterpart that I'm used to previous in my British Army career. We will see in the near future. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. I really do appreciate it. Um, I am going to be doing some more videos on this kind of technology inclusive of that is infrared sensors uh, similar to the multi-spectral combat ID beacons that they use to identify friend from foe which uh, could be interesting. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like, feel free to support my Patreon account, and I will catch you next time. All the best, bye-bye.